Phishing campaigns and other cyber attacks attempting to target your corporate emails are still on the rise. And cyber criminals continue to use your inbox as an entry point for major hacking operations. But despite an increased awareness of dangers posed by phishing attacks, they're still the most common way cyber criminals break into networks. But why is this? I'm Danny Palmer, this is ZDNet Security Updates, and with me to discuss all things email security is Dr. Kiri Addison, Head of Data Science for Threat Intelligence and Overwatch at Minecast. Thanks for joining me, Kiri. So first of all, what is phishing and why is it so successful? Hi, so um, phishing is a very simple but technique that um, criminals or threat actors will use, and essentially, the aim is to lure a victim into an action. So that could be clicking on a link, opening an attachment, um, and essentially the point is to, um, you know, it could be to uh, steal credentials, so to take them to a phishing page, or it could be to take them to a link which installs malware on their machine. So it's just a very simple um, and effective technique that criminals are using at the moment. I guess, why is it so effective? I, mean, I guess we've, all, we've probably all seen a phishing email in, in one form or another. I mean. I got some today in my personal account saying, you've won a gift card from Home Depot, click here. I'm not even in a country where Home Depot is, is, a, is a thing, but I suppose even if a lot of people are going to go, that's weird, I'm not clicking that. There's people who uh, might not know about uh, email security as much, or just, it's a typical thing of phishing attacks of, offers of competition wins and things which sometimes might seem to be too good to be true but there's always that lure of hey you won something or you know click here to see this which is going to give rise to curiosity of, of, of potential victims yeah that's it and it's kind of it's what we call social engineering so it's adding in that kind of element of um you know, it could be urgency, so they may say, you know, you need to um, respond to this email today or something bad is going to happen to you. Um, it could be, you know, feeling to, well, you kind of greed in a way, say, you've won the lottery, send us your details, we're going to put the money in your bank account. Um, so it's, it's trying to entice that person um, to click in some way, and that's something that we've seen press actors doing very successfully, especially through the course of the coronavirus pandemic. I was about to mention, yes, with everyone now, or a lot of people now working remotely, um, phishing attacks looking to take advantage of the uh, coronavirus pandemic uh, have, uh, you know, we, uh, there's, there's been a lot of them. And they're also targeting uh, corporate networks now uh, as well. Yeah, so we've seen a massive increase of phishing um, since coronavirus started. And... Um, yeah, that's kind of really playing on that social engineering aspect. So the criminals will feed their emails to whatever is kind of in the news or in people's minds at the time. So back in January, kind of late January, February, when the whole thing started, we were seeing phishing emails um, that were about the outbreak, um, quick kids find out the latest symptoms, that kind of stuff. We then moved on um, as government stepped in to impersonating government organisations or World Health Organisation, for example, and to really just follow that kind of trend. And obviously anyone falling victim to a phishing attack is not good for them because you know if uh, you or I had our sort of email address or password stolen for our personal accounts that would, that would be annoying and but when it comes to corporate accounts uh, where attackers are specifically going after uh, business email uh, accounts this could have implications for an entire network and an entire corporation if the attackers uh, move about the network in the right way once getting an employee's login details, especially if they have, for example, uh, admin privileges. Yeah, exactly. You know, it can only take that one person, um, just takes that one person to get compromised when the attacker has gained access to the network. So when it comes to attacks on corporate networks, I mean, a lot of organizations are aware of uh, business email compromise attacks and phishing attacks. Uh, but it seems that that's still not quite filtering through to alerting in employees about this. I mean, uh, uh, a, a re recent research uh, by, by, by Minecast suggested that over half of organisations aren't doing regular email training, which seems a bit 
I mean, if organisations are doing that, that doesn't connect well with what uh, we've established is the most common way that cyber attacks get into networks. Yeah, exactly. Um, this is a kind of massive problem um, that we kind of uncovered with the report. And I think there are kind of a number of issues at play here. So I think some organisations, maybe they've done awareness training in the past, but it hasn't been the right kind of training. So it hasn't been successful. They haven't seen the improvements they were expecting um, when they run phishing simulations afterwards. So they haven't continued to invest in that program. Um, but that could just be because, you know, it was the wrong kind of training. Um, it wasn't engaging enough. Often it's kind of developed in-house and not enough kind of resources put into it and it doesn't take into account the current threat landscape. Um, also, I think sometimes organisations just don't understand the importance of the human. Um, you know, it, the human is another part of your security um, stack, really. They're another layer and they intersect with all the others. So, and arguably, one of the most important um, layers and really organisations need to concentrate on the human as well as all the other um, aspects. Yes, no, with the... Uh, with how things are in the world as well, with no all the remote working, uh, people organisations could have had a uh, awareness and training program set up, and they could have had you know potentially the best security solution on the corporate network. But once your employees are working from home, they're not going to have that same security on their home network, which could create more problems uh, moving forward. Yeah, exactly. And it's, um, you know, I think when people have moved to work, working from home, we have seen um, cyber security hygiene decrease. And um, we've noticed in our own data that the, um, you know, there has been an uptick in the number of malicious URL clicks that we've blocked. Um, so people don't have that same kind of mindset, the same security mindset that they would do if they were in the office. Um, but that just, you know, Kind of reinforces the importance of regular awareness training and keeping them up to date with the latest threats. I guess that leads into sort of what was going to be sort of a, I guess the the obvious question here. I mean, what do organisations and people need to do to ensure that they uh, don't fall uh, victim to uh, this kind of attack, especially when uh, they're so common and they can be really um, clever. In, in some occasions as well. We've discussed some of the simple attacks, but there's also campaigns which will mimic um, one of your colleagues or someone you know in order to trick you into, say, giving up your corporate credentials or transferring a large amount of money. Yeah, so there are a number of um, things that organisations should do, and it's, it's um, really about taking a layered approach to security. Uh, if you just focus on the people element um, you know awareness training is really important you need to keep them up to date with the current um, current threat um, also as we've seen um, with the pandemic it's this confusion um, that everyone's feeling and this kind of lack of information that is making them click on these links and interacting with the email so what we've seen recently as lockdown has been eased we've seen campaigns which are all around going back to the office, returning to office, you know, click here for the latest company information um, so you know what to do when you come back to the office. But if companies keep communication open with our employees, keep them informed and up to date, have a central resource, they're going to feel that they're lacking in that. Um, so they're going to be less likely to click on the links and track with the phishing emails. But, Equally, um, you know, it's all the other layers that need to be considered as well. So um, we have kind of three zones that we consider in terms of security, the kind of perimeter, which is your secure email gateway. So this is kind of things coming in to you. Um, you then have inside the perimeter. So this is, it covers the insider um, user behavior, but also it's okay. If something has got past that first zone inside the perimeter, um, you know, you need to act on it and get it out basically, remediate it, um, which you can do if you, uh, you know, for, for example, taking lots of um, press intelligence feeds and correlate those with what's actually got through the perimeter into your environment. And then you've also got beyond that, um, the kind of third zone, which is outside of your organisation, and that is all around um, kind of brand awareness, brand abuse, press actors who may be trying to impersonate your brand, um, maybe impersonate your domain, sending emails, spoofing your domain, 
which can then be used to trick your users or customers. And I suppose uh, to, to conclude this, uh, phishing attacks aren't going to be going away anytime soon, unfortunately. So it's important to be alert uh, to, to, to them as they continue to arrive in uh, our inboxes, uh, you know, uh, 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 all of us around the world. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's just all that, you know, following the basic advice, but organisations that kind of have banged on a lot about um, in our chat, they need to keep um, regular awareness training ongoing, regularly refreshing their employees with the latest security advice. Well, hopefully that advice will be taken on board. Uh, thanks for joining me, Kiri. It's been very interesting. Um, and for more on security news and advice, be sure to uh, keep watching ZDNet Security Update and to keep reading uh, security articles on ZDNet. Thank you for watching.